What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another Bible Wisdom. Again, I changed it from Counting Wisdom, so sometimes I'm like, uh, I need to say Counting Wisdom instead of Bible Wisdom. But anyway, um, the channel used to be called Counting Wisdom. Um, but anyway, I'm going to read, start off this video with reading some uh, promises from my Promises book here. Um, I highly recommend getting a Promises book. Um, this is Bible Promises for Men, uh, but obviously, even if you were to get this exact book, uh, you know, a woman can use it too, but I think they're trying to target specific things that, uh, men go through, but obviously they have Bible Promises for Women, um, and then they have a general Bible Promises book, and actually I saw some, um, at the Dollar Tree, so, you know, you might want to check out your local Dollar Tree uh, and see if they have one there um, in the book section. You might have to dig around a little bit. But anyway, um, joy. So this book lists uh, promises by uh, kind of different uh, subjects. And this subject is joy. And I'm going to read Luke 2.10. And the angel said unto him, fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Luke 2, verse 10. Yeah, so, you know, Jesus, he's supposed to give us joy. You know, even though I think we can't get focused on the problems of life. Because if you focus on the problems, you know, sometimes I'm focusing on, you know, uh, different issues like, oh man, you know, there's hell or you know, suffering or, um, just some other issue that could bother you, you know, whether you are wanting a relationship to work out, you know, with someone like a romantic relationship or, um, you know, maybe something with friends or people, you know, that's bothering you, you know, those type problems can really deter us from, take us away from, you know, uh, following Christ because we're like, oh, you know, we start to doubt God. We, we start to think God doesn't care. But, you know, I have to, I have to remind myself that God does care, you know, that God is only good, you know, and he loves me. And just because I might have something bad happen to me or, you know, some sort of suffering comes, um, something misfortunate, uh, you know, misfortunate, uh, unfortunate, <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, something bad happens, you know, it doesn't mean that God is good. You know, there's a reason and he can work all things for your good. If you would just love God, you know, and of course we love God by keeping his commandments. I have some other videos that I go through some of the commands um, obviously you can do that yourself, but, you know, I kind of focus on a few important commands. Um, I do use the 10 commandments, but obviously we're not under law. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to read another one. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. Psalm 28, 7. Yeah, you know, a reminder is to try to sing, you know, one way I matured as a Christian uh, was that I started to sing in church and I started to just sing on my own. You know, there's been a while where I felt like I didn't want to sing, you know, and it's kind of like maybe you feel embarrassed or something or, you know, maybe you think like it's kind of weird you know, or like you don't want anyone to see you singing, whatever the case may be, you know, sing to the Lord. You know, we sing to God because we're thankful for what he's doing in our life, what he's going to do in our life, you know. And I recommend, you know, if you feel like you don't have anything good in your life, you know, ask God for something good. You know, the Jesus, he, he told us to ask. If you don't remember, um, he was saying, I'm you can Google the phrase, but 
he was saying how, you know, which of you parents, when your son or daughter ask for a fish, will you give them a stone? You know, and he said, how much more will God in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So, you know, I just encourage you that, you know, ask God today for something good in your life for good things. You can just specifically use the phrase good things. You know, God, will you give me good things? And, you know, he's promises that he will do it, you know. Um, So anyway, let's go on. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Philippians 4, 4. You know, yeah. uh, If there's not nothing good that we can rejoice in uh, around us necessarily, there's probably always something. But, you know, Paul, he got a lot of his joy from the Lord, you know, and so instead of being mad at God, you know, about some situation that, you know, might have gone sour or didn't really work out, um, let's find joy in the Lord, you know, let's find joy. And next time when that situation comes around, you know, God can help you and you're smarter for it. You know, you're, you can do better next time, you know? So anyway, Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. John 16, 24. There you go right there. Uh, We were just talking about that. You know, if you ask God, you know, and then try to have a little bit of faith. You know, maybe you don't know how it will happen. Maybe you're a little bit unsure that it will happen. But having the faith to say, you know, I believe that God can give me good things and he'll give me something good, you know, and believe for it. You know, you don't have to believe a whole lot, but, you know, you can believe a whole lot if that's what you feel like you have, you know, hey, why not? So anyway, um, be glad in the Lord and and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy. All ye that are upright in heart, Psalm thirty-two, eleven. I kind of paused there because I was like, did I read this already? Is any merry? Let him sing psalms, James five thirteen. Okay, let's read a few more. Um, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. 2 Corinthians 6.10. Yeah, so, you know, when we come to Jesus, you know, it may seem like we're kind of having a hard time in life, but it says that we're rich because of Jesus. It may not necessarily be, it's not necessarily talking about money, although God can prosper you, um, but we're rich in so many other things, and we have riches in heaven. You know, we have such a good life waiting for us. While, you know, if you don't choose Jesus, you don't really have anything to look forward to, you know, but life is going to get better. You know, I always try to take the standpoint of like, you know what, if I don't start that business that I'm looking to start in this life, you know, life is going to go on. You know, when we put our faith in Jesus, you know, we live, we're going to be living forever, you know, 100, 200, 300, it's just going to keep going. Our years are going to keep increasing. And so there will be time to do things that you may not feel like you have the time to do right now. You know, we're going to have plenty of time on our hands. And yet we'll probably still be kind of busy, but we'll also be resting. So uh, I want to transition to rest. That's a good thing that I want to talk about. You know, um, we need to rest. You know, we need to find rest. Um, The Bible says don't overwork to be rich, you know. And there's kind of a peace that you can have with, you know, you have what you need. You may not have, you know, a mansion or you may not have the nicest car. But, you know, we can have gratefulness for the things that we have you know, and we have a mansion in heaven, you know, um, some things we just have to learn to be patient about, you know, um, you know, certain things that we may not have right now, 
Um, God says there's no good thing that he will withhold from them that walk uprightly. So, you know, if you're turning to Jesus today, you know, you have so many good things to live for, even though you may not always be able to see it. You know, I am reminded of it every now and again, but sometimes I kind of get into those moments where I'm like, uh, you know, I feel like I'm kind of getting annoyed or maybe I think life is, you know, kind of going slow, like, God, you know, please show up, you know, God, please take us out of this earth. But, you know, I try to sometimes, you know, pray and ask God for help and just, you know, ask him you know, to, uh, kind of distract me from the time that I'm feeling like I have to wait. And anyway, so, you know, the Bible says, if you're suffering, you know, pray. And so we're all going to, when we choose Jesus, we're all going to go through some sort of suffering, but God can help us, you know, he's going to comfort us. Um, and you know, he has good things and he's going to strengthen us. You know, there's a great song that if you want to look up on YouTube, I'm sure you probably have already heard it by now if you're really on new songs, but Waiting on the Lord uh, by Elevation Worship. It's called Wait on the Lord, uh, or I think it's called Wait on You, actually, Wait on You uh, by Elevation Worship. It's a super great song, you know, reminding us of waiting. The last part of this video, um, I wanted to try and talk about heaven. You know, there's a great book by Randy Alcorn talking about heaven. Uh, and I recommend again that you listen to audiobooks if you don't like reading a lot. Maybe that's not your thing. Um, it's important to get wisdom. And so I recommend, you know, trying to learn and set up and get audiobooks in your life, you know, if that's not what you do already. But anyway, um, heaven, you know, that's our final home, you know, and I wanted to talk about just a reminder, you know, when God comes back, you know, he's going to set up his thousand year reign. Jesus is going to come back and rule over the earth. You know, he's going to be king or president or ruler, you know, over the earth. And that's going to happen for a thousand years. And that's explained in you know, the 19th chapter of Revelation. I think it's chapter 19 or it's chapter 20. Definitely either one of those two. But anyway, you know, God is going to come back. And then also, you know, um, we also are, you know, going to have the new Jerusalem, um, which is going to be awesome. You know, the new Jerusalem, it's kind of like, I don't know if you have a favorite city that you're always like, wow, that's a pretty cool looking city. You know, it's going to be so amazing. You know, it's going to be similar to that city, but way better. You know, I mean, I don't know, but uh, I am just going to assume that it's going to be way better than any city that we have seen here. And it's going to come down out of heaven and it's called the New Jerusalem. It's basically, you know, a city that God has been working on. It says in another place outside of Revelation, it says that God, and I think it's in the Gospels actually, that God has been preparing a city for us since the foundation of the world. You know, it could be a metaphor, but I also think of it as, you know, it's, a, it's not a metaphor. You know, God has been working on this city for all of us to stay for a long time, you know, and so we have things to look forward to that he's revealed. But the Bible also says that God, you know, it can do more than what we ask, think or imagine. So, you know, there's good things, good reasons to serve God. There's good reasons to um, really strive to enter the narrow gate. You know, yeah, you might have sinned yesterday and metaphorically yesterday, um, but, you know, God, we have time to uh, turn away from those sins, you know. So anyway, I wanted to mention some more about heaven. You know, um, we're going to have rewards there for the good things that we do, you know, um, even though you may not, uh, we're not necessarily saved 
by our good works, but we're saved unto good works. You know, God saved us so that we can use our use our life to do good things for other people uh, or other animals as well or for the earth uh, and for God. And so um, there's going to be rewards in heaven, you know, and this might sound like a lot, but we believe it by faith. You know, we believe the Bible is the word of God when we come to Jesus. And if you aren't sure, you know, ask God for more faith. You know, as I've heard of people coming to Jesus, giving him a try by uh, just asking God, asking Jesus to uh, reveal himself to to that person. But anyway, you know, heaven, like the movie heaven is for real. I don't know if that's a good movie or not. I think I saw it. But anyway, heaven is real, you know. Uh, and so we have so many good things that we can uh, look forward to you know and it won't be too long you know obviously it's going to be kind of a long time because of earth because of our life but the bible also says it's not a long time from now because uh life happens so fast you know the bible says that uh we're kind of like i think one one way it describes it is like we're like a mist you know or uh we're like grass you know it's here today gone tomorrow um and so sometimes it can feel long like oh man you know when are we going to get to heaven excuse me um i know when i was like i don't know the exact age but when i was like 10 or something you know i used to wish that i was a little bit older and so it's kind of like that, you know, we're wanting to get to heaven. And so the Bible in J the book of James, it says that we need to be patient for the coming of the Lord, you know, for Jesus's return, you know, instead of just being like, you know, God, I want to get there today. You know, where are you? We have to still do what's right. You know, we still have to continue on this journey regardless of how long it takes even if we die before we see Jesus' return we have a task we have things to attend to now you know there's quite a lot of things that we should be doing um and so uh yeah i hope this video was helpful um i try to make videos daily um maybe sometimes i skip a day or so but i try to make them every day um so anyway um that's it for today i hope you got something from this video um and i will talk to you on the next video see ya oh and uh, i try to give the date today is uh friday the july 23rd it's about 7 and 7 p.m 7 at night after a day's work so uh all right see ya